guys and welcome back to my channel it's Benita from Benita Doodles and this tutorial uh, is going to be about fur and common mistakes that are made from people who are just starting out and uh, they're trying to learn to get that thick fluffy fur texture that we all strive to get when we're doing realism I've done the first few in graphite uh, because people don't just use colored pencils they use graphite as well um, and what I'm doing at the top here is essentially the wrong way to do it and is one of the common mistakes that I see with beginners. They tend not to focus very much on the blending of the first few layers. They tend to, from what I can see, get the first couple of layers down. They may blend one or two, but that's generally about it from what I can see, from what I can make out. When we're working with any medium, especially pencil, you've got to layer and layer and layer and the layers can become pretty endless until you can't layer anymore. So you could be looking anywhere between 10 and 20 layers depending on the medium and the paper that you're using. So the first, as I say, major mistake that I see is not enough layers on your portraits. So here I've only done two to three layers and actually when you look at some of the beginner portraits this is a very similar scene and like the very strong pencil lines, uh, not a lot of blending, some very strong start stopping uh, and very high contrast between where your shadows have started and where your normal fur has begun. So when I work in graphite I layer and layer and layer as much as I can, even in coloured pencils. You're going to hear me say it all the way through, so apologies. It's going to drive you nuts. The other thing is, as well, um, I've done this at standard speed. Uh, I know a lot of people do it at time lapse, and it's not always easy to see exactly what's going on. And I have only done it in small patches, so uh, it's not going to be... Uh, quite on par with a lot of the other tutorials out there, but it does give you an idea of how I do it. Everyone has a different way of doing it. There's sometimes a, a collective where, you know, base layers go down, then the strokes get filled in, then highlights and shadows get added. You know, it really does vary and you're gonna end up coming up with your own way of doing things anyway. But the basis is that you have to blend throughout your layers. If you don't, you end up with a very cross hatch looking portrait now my wonderful patreons thank you so much for offering up some of your pictures and some of these are very early pictures some of them are still learning some of them are brand new to using pencils and graphite so i really do appreciate what they've done for me and you'll see a few of them pop up as i mentioned some of the errors that we go through and as i said one of the most common ones i see with graphite is there is not enough blending going on you don't have to blend with stubbies, you can blend with makeup sponges, you can blend with cotton buds, uh, anything sort of soft really, just don't use fingers because the grease on the fingers will pick up and uh, you'll ruin your graphite and you'll ruin your paper surface. So just don't use your fingers. What I've done here is you saw me blend out the first couple of layers and I only started off using the 2 H, uh, the 2B, sorry, and I've limited the amount of colours I'm using just for speed. I'm using the Caran d'Ache Graphwood at the moment. But a lot of people make the other error that they will pick out every single fine hair that they see and that isn't necessarily what you can actually see in your photo. If you're looking for photo realism, you have to draw what you see in the picture, not what you think it should look like. So if there is a very large dark patch, that's exactly what you have to draw. Don't try and get fur strokes in within that dark patch. I sort of show you what I mean by that a bit later on when we move on to the pencil colours. I've mixed here between um, the shadow and the highlight and the Tombow Mono Eraser that I use is really, really good for picking out highlights with graphite. And normally graphite you work from dark to light, whereas coloured pencil you work the other way around. So it's worth having a really good eraser or you can use the indenting method. If you're not familiar with that, there's a YouTube video in my um, how to's and you can have a look through so if you look now I'm even going over 
my highlights because even when you go over your highlights it then gives it another dimension so not only have I got your dark areas your light areas you've got your mid-tones and you've got your tones in between your mid-tones and your dark areas so just keep layering it's just the biggest um, asset for you with regards to getting depth into fur I'm going to pop up a sample now for you so you can have a look and see what I mean so here on the right hand side is one of my lovely patrons who's offered up their picture in graphite for me and they don't often actually work in graphite they tend to work a lot more in colored pencils so I thought it was quite a good one to show from a complete beginner's angle and you can see here exactly what I mean about the uh, lack of blending on the under layers because there's not a lot of blending on the underlayer, it's very much um, an illustrative style rather than a realism style because, um, say for example on the giraffe's head, they'll be very curved and very round and all your highlights and your shadows um, would merge in uh, quite easily together whereas at the moment you're looking at more of a sketchy style where you have your black and your white. But if we'd layered underneath a lot more and you'll see me drawing the sample now where I'm actually doing a short haired version this is the sort of effect that you can get within those stripes so we're doing very short I'm going to show you in a moment here very misdirectioned lines and we've got to keep going and going and going with these lines to build up the depth now you, they don't all go in the same direction which is another common mistake that people make fur goes in other directions it doesn't just go in one straight line the only time generally you see that happen is in it's extremely short haired dogs um, other animals that might can't think of any off the top of my head uh, but you keep your strokes going in just very gentle different directions you go too much it's just going to look a mess and you're not going to be able to blend them out I'm going even shorter here so you can see just how short with those hairs that you can go and I'm being quite sporadic with how I am but I'm leaving negative space there and the negative space that you leave will allow you to then have natural looking highlights without you having to go back and put too many in so even when I'm blending over the top I'm not getting rid of what I've already done I'm simply softening those hairs underneath when you look at um, a photo of an animal and you look through the depth of the fur you don't see every single um, fur strand you see highlights and you see shadows and yes you do on the top end of the you know the closest to you you will see the fur strands but you need to get that depth throughout the fur so it's worth blending in two or three stages as you start drawing up and, and coming through so on the right here now is a picture I did uh, a few weeks back uh, which was very very short haired and there was a lot of blending that went on in between layers to give the illusion of the short hair still being thick. This is part of the reason why layering will assist you uh, especially when you're doing short hair in this sense because it gives you the depth that you need, the nice fluffiness that, that um, fur requires for it to have that realistic look. Now if you're not going for photorealism, it's absolutely fine if you want to draw every hair, that decision is up to you. Everybody's going to have their own way of doing things and you know every artist has got their own stamp on their drawings. Uh, for me personally, I prefer to get it as real to the photo as possible because I enjoy um, the observation of it all and trying to replicate what I'm seeing in the photo. So keeping your strokes short, blending in between, adding your highlights with your eraser too if you wanted to, all of these will lend towards getting a more realistic look. So when it comes to curly hair, that can be a bit trickier. And I think a lot of people uh, suffer from, again, drawing every single hair syndrome. I need to find a short word for that. <laughs> and um, DS, DESS, -S, something like that. Again, blend out your base layers. It's so worth blending out your base layers because you don't want to be seeing all your pencil marks. Now, a lot of people tend to just draw in these hairs as they see them 
and leave them as now that's fine for straggly hairs and um, especially for human hair when you've got like ponytails and bits of hair that's randomly flying everywhere but actually curls don't act like that curls can be quite solid pieces of hair they can be quite lumpy pieces of hair especially when that hair is wet what you ideally want to do is make them uh, more of a solid piece so rather than trying to look at all individual hairs again just look at where your shadows fall and your highlights fall when you're looking at your photo reference and if you are trying to um, achieve the realism really do work from reference photos uh, because it helps practice where naturally shadows would lie and where highlights would fall so um, make it a more solid curl especially with, as I say with wet dogs curls are pretty solid and you will have very strong dark areas and very highlighted areas as well as I say the joy with um, graphite is that you can erase it quite well if you haven't gone too thick or press too hard uh, to begin with otherwise you'll find it hard to erase it out so just make your shapes more solid like I'm doing here get in those shadows uh, I'm not working from a reference which isn't the best example to follow um, but it, you know it gives you an idea of how I lay my layers down and um, where you essentially are having to make sure that you're getting the details right so as i say look carefully at your reference don't just think of them as hairs think of them as shadow shapes as triangles as u shapes s shapes you know there's a lot of s shapes in curls a lot of u shapes in curls look at it that way not all the strands you can put the strands in like i'm doing here because there tends to be um you know when the dogs just got out the the water for example and shaken itself you get a lot of loose straggly hairs but in between that you do need more solid areas uh, underneath as well if it's very dark underneath make sure you're getting that tone in right on hair like this it's worth not dismissing your lighter pencils going right down to your H's so your 4H your 2H uh, they're actually very very good at getting very fine hairs very fine fur um, so you can pick up some real fine detail especially when you're doing short hairs on white dogs the H's stop you going too heavy and they're also nice and fine so it gives you a much more realistic look when you're using the whole spectrum of your pencils I generally use uh, 2H up 2H is my favourite actually for adding details so I'm using a 2H here now depending on the brand of pencil that you have the, the colour laid down will be very different but it's a good way of getting some fine wispy hairs in there without being too much I have to say I think one of the biggest mistakes I see beginner artists do is don't take enough time I was exactly the same when I started this isn't a dig at anybody at all because I had no patience when I began I wanted everything rendered up now I wanted it finished um, you know I thought I achieved extremely good results at the beginning um, and patience was the key you really have got to spend your time on doing these portraits. I mean, an A5 graphite portrait can still take me five to six hours to do. Sometimes they take longer. If you find that you're completing a full blown portrait in a matter of a few hours, you need to slow down and you need to take your time. You need to blend more. You need to blend out your first strokes. You know not every photo you see will have everything showing and i'm going to bore you again by saying it again look at the shadow shapes look at the highlight shapes not necessarily how long someone's fur is or how short it is or where that hair pokes or get the the majority of your shadows down first especially in graphite it's easier to get your shadows down first when we come to working in colored pencil it's actually the reverse and we work from light to dark 
and it's easier to work with this method because we can leave the lights underneath to actually give us natural highlights. I just popped underneath a piece of um, kitchen lino, some spare I had from doing the office in my den, and I'm just showing you the indentation method. If you haven't seen the tutorial video, there is a video in my list on how to do the technique and um, what other tools you can use if you don't have ball tools to hand. But these are methods you can use when using coloured pencil and it works for graphite. Those of you that follow me on a regular basis have seen me use it quite a lot on all of my portraits. I'll pop up a sample in the middle actually so you can have a look and see how effective it is on the graphite. Pretty much his beard um, and all the highlighted hairs were done with the indentation method so it is really worth getting to grips with that because it will save you an awful lot of time in the long run especially if you have very highlighted dogs or dogs or even cats actually that have you know like a tortoise shell cat that has a lot of highlights i was just showing you there um rather than going up and down with your pencil it's hard to see on the video but i use circular motions oval motions and that stops a lot of the pencil lines that you find you uh, will struggle to get rid of if you don't firstly go lightly on your base layer and secondly if you just go up and down. I always put a solid base layer down first. I never attempt to put first strokes in on my first layer and I will layer up to four, five, six layers uh, doing the method of first strokes, flat layer, first strokes, flat layer, first strokes, flat layer. Um, and the reason being is the texture of the paper can lend itself so you don't always get into the tooth of the paper with the various colours that you're using. So when you do your lightest colour on the bottom you can then leave certain areas and that will give you a natural highlight effectively leaving negative space. Again I've got another tutorial in the feeds uh, with regards to using negative space, different methods actually of doing highlights. So it's worth having a look through some of my old videos if you haven't already. So I'm pretty much doing, I don't know, mid-range hair, I suppose, uh, just showing you how you can work it around. Again, I'm not using a reference at the moment. I am literally just showing you the techniques and methods that I use to get a realis realistic uh, fur coat. I will blend between the layers not necessarily between every layer because you can find that if you do that too much too hard you can't blend layers on top now I went to sharpen my pencil here and unfortunately it broke <laughs> so uh, there's a little bit of a delay um, but once you get over the fear of going dark on fur as well that's the another common mistake is people don't go dark enough they're really really worried that they're going to ruin the whole picture Yes, there are things that are not recoverable if you completely mess it up, but going dark is not an issue. Erasers were invented for a reason, and this is one of them. So the one I use, the Tombow Mono, is a very hard plastic eraser, so it works really, really well. The Once you get layering and layering and layering, yes, it gets harder to erase, but you can still take it away enough that it's not as dark as it was previously. So please don't be afraid to go dark and if you do it, just do it gradually and then you know when to stop. It sounds a really, really daft thing to say, but if you squint at your reference picture, it will show you very clearly where your highlights and where your shadows are. It takes out detail and then all you can see is where you need to go dark and where you need to go light. And it's a method I use quite often if I'm not quite sure how dark or if I've gone dark enough in certain areas. So that was short head or mid depending on the uh, size of the strokes that you use and this one's curly hair. Um, again you can see if you can get a really good indentation in there it works really well for getting um, highlights in without you having to go over the top again. As I said before I am doing this very quickly for you. Uh, it's, it's quite a long tutorial, it's 33 minutes long. Um, but I wanted to give you an idea and I'm also going to pop a bit of a, um, a time lapse at the end where you see me putting all these methods into place on the Patreon tutorial that we are currently doing. If you are interested in learning with me and 
fancy giving it a go no matter whether you're a beginner or whether you're advanced or intermediate if you just want to learn um, I do have a Patreon channel so just come find me and you can learn from less than £3 a month or $3.71 if you're outside Europe but as I say again don't be afraid to go too dark blend those layers over blend 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 not enough people blend another common mistake if you don't blend it helps give it that sketchy look and in nature there are no natural straight lines everything has a nice natural curve in its in its um in its lighting it's hard to explain and you just got to make sure that you keep blending in between and it softens the first stroke so they're not so harsh on the eye and they look a lot more natural than if you were to keep them all very very solid and straight again don't forget that there are thick areas of color it's not every stroke is seen there's going to be solid colors in fact i'll show you a picture in a second where um, solid color has come into play quite a lot this is a very recent uh, picture i did and you can see that there are quite a lot of solid colored areas there but i have still done some short pencil motions to give the illusion of fur but it's all still very soft it's not very hard so here's another sample coming up now of the layering that we've been talking about so it looks from what I can see that there's been a couple of under layers one quite solid one not so solid and I can see some of the error in there in the sense of the tonal values and we're going to come up and show you a, um, a prime version of this actually when we come to do the last part of the fur which is very very short fur and common in black cats uh, black cats are never black so if you are finding you're just not getting that realistic look or it's um you know the, the colors aren't going down very well i mean it looks like the previous cat only had about three layers again you're looking easily with colored pencils getting up to 10 plus layers and it's important to get those many layers in there because you're not going to get the depth any other way so again when i was mentioning earlier patience is really really key to drawing fur i'm going to pop up another sample for you and we're going to have a look at this one as well i've got a really sweet bunny really lovely face coming up um, and again from what i can see here the issue has not been enough layers uh, it looks probably maybe only about three four layers four at most there's not been a lot of blending going on underneath so i wanted to show you here as it's actually quite a similar color to to the rabbit i'm putting two colors down and the reason i'm putting two colors down is because you can see the tones through the other colors you know colors are not um 100 opaque when you're going lightly over them they're light enough that you can see your tones underneath and making sure you pick out all your tones in your fur is another important thing to do i think that's also another error that that um, when you're starting out you tend to look at very flat colors so when you are looking at cats like here for example i'm going to show you we're going from one tonal to another so we're going from red all the way through to uh, gray so i've used a Payne's gray here and a caput morton violet just to show you the blending of the two um, say for example you've got a tortoise shell cap where the shading is very very different each time they uh, they have their patches it's about blending those in and getting those right so we've already got two layers down we've put a third layer down of, of first strokes we're going in different directions again we're going to be putting some shadows in again I'm not using a reference here which is not helping myself either but we're going into the lighter areas and we're pulling the the different tones into the areas that we need to but i'm leaving negative space as well for the highlights we don't have to fill the entire area but what you do need to do is cross hatch over each other if you don't you won't get the depth you'll just get a very very flat looking patch of fur so i'm now blending out 
but I'm blending out in different directions again so it's giving you another dimension so we're just going to keep blending out over that and leaving again negative space I'm not worrying about where that negative space is the only time I will is if there is a relevant highlight or a relevant shadow on that photo I need to follow but those bits of information would have been captured at the beginning when you do your line work I tend to blend with lighter versions of the tones that I'm using. I don't like to use blending solutions or blending pencils. I've never really got on with them. So for me, I like to blend with the, the colored pencils themselves. So it helps actually to create natural softness and natural highlights in the fur as well. It can also be a good way to change the tonal value of fur too. If you find you're going in the wrong direction, simply find a color that's more in the tonal range that you need, brush over the top of it and you'll find you'll change the colour of your fur. I've had a lot of pets actually which have got this this mottled multicoloured um, God the Cat which you'll see at the end of this, I'll, I'll pop a time lapse up for you, has a huge amount of variety of colours and blending these in in this manner is the best way to get a much more of a natural uh, natural blend for your fur so just keep blending out with your pencils in between your layers strokes in different directions fur generally does not lay in the same way unless they've been to the groomers and then even then they're not perfect so what I mean by going in the direction here for example we're going up and we're following the direction of the face and the curves of the natural fur and all these little tiny dark patches in there is what's going to give you the, the natural look again for people that are afraid to go too dark if you don't they won't look like shadows it, it just doesn't look right my favorite one for using on highlights and blending is the luminance which is by Karen Dash I always have a white and I always have a titanium buff to hand titanium buff is my favorite one to blend with especially on pets because it has a very slight a beigey tone to it like a um, almost almost like a fleshy tone and it's really really good for blending out without losing too much color so hopefully you can see there that you can get a really good mix and a natural blend without it looking like it's stopping and then all of a sudden starting again is it's much more natural so the other big mistake I see for beginners when doing black is that they only use black. Black is a very complex colour and it's made up from very different tones. You can get warm blacks and you can get cold blacks. Really look at your reference picture and pick it out. If you're not sure what colours to use to begin with then maybe get yourself a colour picker app there's loads available so it's worth having a look or if you've got Photoshop you can take it into Photoshop and have a look so I'm using a cold black this time round so I've layered with the Payne's grey and then I'm doing solid layers again this is a short haired cat as inspiration for you um, and then I've gone with the dark indigo I'm then blending that out with a cold grey because we're staying in with blue tones now only on the third layer am I starting to use my pencil in a stroke manner so I'm you know going backwards and forwards sporadically putting in a few stroke lines and I'll do this either side and then I'll blend again and you'll see the more we blend the more stroke lines we get in there, the more solid colours, the more natural it all starts to look. Sorry, you're just now listening to my printer shut down. Apologies. So I'm going back over with the Payne's Grey, so I still haven't even picked up the black pencil yet. And already if you were to see the picture in context, you would probably turn around and say, okay, that's a black cat. I did do a black cat in fact I'll, I'll see if I can find the picture for you because um, I 
think only 10% of the cat I actually used a black pencil on. So although you can see that this is a black cat, very little of the cat itself actually had black pencil put to it. Because it was sat in the sun, it was picking out all the colours that were making up his fur. So he was very blue toned, he was very brown toned in places. And if you go straight in with black, you're instantly going to lose any depth, any shape and any realism that you're trying to occur. Um, I'm very quickly just because a lot of people worry about doing white fur. And that's the other biggest mistake is they leave white fur white. I never, ever leave my paper white ever, if possible. <laughs> Uh, the only time is probably in graphite portraits where I, I absolutely need to but I, I try and do my best because if your contrast is high enough and your darkest are dark enough you can get away with putting light greys, light cold greys, titanium buff like I mentioned before and you will then naturally make it look white. Too many people worry about drawing white fur. It's another mistake I hear so often is people worry more and more and more about doing white fur. Ignore the white fur. Do the dark fur. Worry about doing that first. Make sure you get the fine hairs that go into the white patches of fur and you will start to automatically create a natural looking white fur anyway. White fur again generally is not white fur unless it's overexposed and then ideally you shouldn't be drawing it anyway. Um, but white fur will either be quite warm in its colour depending on what reflections are or the colour of the fur that's surrounding it or it will be cold again. So you can use some nice cold greys, the light cold greys just to make shadows within that white fur. I've done many a white fur where actually little of it is actually white. Uh, so now I'm only just putting the black on. It's the last thing I'm doing and I'm doing it in a solid motion as well. So I'm doing it in my little circular motions and it's a nice solid flat colour. So say for example this would be part of a highlight, part of a leg, maybe a highlight on the leg, um, on the leg, repeat myself now, on the ear, um, on the forehead, just keep building those layers we're on what layer five or six now and I'm still going and we're bringing those in coming out into the white to give us that more natural look I'm aware I'm going in the other direction it is just a sample um, but if you want to achieve the realistic look that you photo realistic look if you want to some people don't always want to do that then these are just the best methods these are the methods that I use and again take your time bit of patience bit of patience never hurt anyone and actually this is a really good way of doing a curl if you imagine a curl like a ringlet very very similar to a ringlet so very similar method I do hope this helps you just to get an idea of how to get going uh, with regards to realism and maybe you've spotted some of the errors that you've made in the past so um, you know if you've got any questions ask below I'm happy to answer them come and find me in my Facebook group come and find me on the Facebook page Patreon's available as I mentioned so come and find me there but in the meantime have a look at God the Cat and he will be showing you some of the techniques that we've gone through in this tutorial